All right. Final little quote, just to think about during the internship. Those of you that have come to other talks I've given, this is a frequently referred to book, this Never Eat Alone work. This idea of networking being about making other people successful. Okay? This idea that you're giving more than you're getting. Giving more than you're getting. Okay? This is just a broader thing to leave you with thinking about when you're in the internship, what do you want your brand to be at the end of the summer? What have you given the company? Okay? And certainly you're going to get a lot back, maybe even a full-time offer at the end of it, right? But what are you giving throughout the internship? Are you the person that's always giving advice about recruiting at Penn? Are you the person who's always saying, yeah, I want to write a white paper. I'm really interested in research and you're going to dabble in that. Are you the person, what is it, right? What are you giving all the time? And then consequently, what are the networks that you're creating through that giving, okay? Again, the word networking is frequently thought of this word as, I'm getting something from you, okay? I'm asking you for an opportunity, right? Flip it upside down. The most successful networking is actually when you're giving to somebody. When you're saying, I want to get in there. I want to roll up my sleeves on that project. I do want to speak at that event. I'm giving my time. I'm giving my energy to your initiative, okay? And that's how you start to build this personal brand that, again, at the end of the summer meeting, when you're not there, they're talking about, okay? So, final third of the talk, okay? When it's all over, when it's all done, at the end of the summer, just a couple quotes in these, no special pictures of mountains, okay? Just a couple quotes for you to think about. When you get to the point where you're reflecting at the end of your summer, maybe you've got a week or two at the end of your summer to say, okay, I just survived, I just did my time, if you will, I just put in good effort, I learned a ton, okay? Let me reflect a little bit, okay? And perhaps if I'm lucky, let me think about whether if I got an opportunity to go back and work with this organization as a full-time professional, would I take that opportunity? Okay? So again, maybe you didn't get the offer quite yet. They're thinking about it. They're doing a little due diligence on their own. What are you thinking about during that time period? A couple of quotes. Okay? If you don't design your own plan, your own life plan, chances are you'll fall into someone else's, and guess what they've got planned for you? Not much. Okay? I was really happy to hear that a lot of your roles are atypical from the kinds of things that even my class only a couple of years ago was thinking about as career paths. Okay? Your life plan is in your hands, okay? Nobody else owns it but you, okay? If you want to be a person who works in media, okay, and in television or in movies out on the West Coast, that's you, okay? And you're gonna make it happen, and it's in your hands right now, okay? Nobody is stopping you from doing that, okay? Except yourself and perhaps the voices in your head coming from other people, okay? So your life plan, the key word there is your, okay? It is your choice. Okay? Not a lot of people go into HR kind of roles coming out of Wharton. Okay? Not a lot of boys go into HR roles coming out of Wharton. Okay? But the life plan, it's in your hands. You do what you want. Okay? A couple others. No elevator to success. You have to take the stairs. Nobody here, okay? Nobody here, I suspect, because you're actually present now. Okay? is looking to take the elevator and be you know, the multi-million dollar or you know, hyper successful entrepreneur. Okay? Tomorrow. No one's looking to do that tomorrow. You've got to take time. It's going to take some steps. It's not going to happen overnight. Okay? There's a patience to professional life that is different than the kind of uh, instant gratification that is perhaps offered in other forms of our lives. Okay? We may not always get to talk to our managers on a specific day. Okay? You may have to wait a week to have the conversation that you're dying to have right now and could be texting your friend about and waiting to hear back from them, right? This kind of instant gratification that pervades other parts of our lives does not always exist professionally. And in fact, it's almost a healthy thing because it forces you to really reflect and think about what you want to say and what you want. Okay? So you're not instantaneously offering emotional responses that are fueled by anger or frustration or hostility. It's, you know what? I'm going to be a little bit more objective. Okay? So just think about that, okay? We're not taking an elevator, we're taking stairs. It's gonna be a journey, okay? Come to this one. Adam, who's had Adam Grant? Who's lucky enough to have Adam Grant in class? Anybody? Nobody? Wow, I didn't even have Adam Grant. He's in my slide deck. <laughs> Holy moly. Okay, so another person, if you are lucky enough to have Adam Grant as a professor, you just have to, okay? Period, full stop, you must enroll in this course. Thank you, okay? Adam Grant teaches the organizational behavior courses here. 
Okay? And if you don't get the chance to enroll in this course, it's got a new book coming out called Give and Take in April. Buy it and read it this summer. Okay? This book, and more broadly, Adam, okay? Adam talks about this idea of not making the right decision, but making the decision right. Don't make the right decision, make the decision right. Okay, so again, we're thinking about after the internship. The decision that you would be making potentially is, should I accept the full-time offer or should I not? Okay? And don't say, is this the right decision? If you decide it is, make it right. If you decide this is the way to go, then make it what you want it to be. Okay? So you're not, again, you're not a reactive passerby to your own career. You are the person who owns it. All right? Don't make the right decision. Make the decision right. All right? Final one. I love if you, again, you got to watch Will Smith on YouTube. Strongly encourage that as well. He's not a professor yet at Wharton, but I'm working on that. Okay? <laughs> Will Smith's got this book. If you're not making someone else's life better, you're just flat out wasting your time. Okay? Will Smith, in videos, on YouTube, he, without question, is making people's lives better. Okay? And in bigger ways that, you know, we don't even perhaps know about. All right? You just have to ask yourself at the end of that internship, do I feel like I'm making someone else's life better? Do it. And it could be, it could look different, right? It could be a company that wants funding. It could be a company that needs to be restructured. It could be a company that needs to merge with another organization. It could be a new product that's going to help people have a better life. Are you doing that? Is the work that you're doing helping someone else's life? Because if it's not, at the end of the day, at the end of those long days as a summer intern or as a young professional, when you're coming home after the 14 hour work day or whatever it is, it's gonna be a little bit more empty. Okay? And it's going to wear on you over time, week after week, Monday after Monday, okay? getting up and doing it. Okay? It just starts to build. So if you don't feel like you're making someone else's life better, you're not adding to the equation of life in some way, you know, something to think about. All right? So this is just another thing to be asking yourself after the summer internship. So that's it. That's the talk. The final idea I want to just leave with you. Okay? The title of this presentation, in typical Dr. G fashion, we're going to tell you what I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to tell you what I told you. All right? Straight up management 100 style. By the way, if you have time, get lunch with Dr. G. Okay? All right? Dr. G, you know, one of the other great mentors of mine, I want you to bring it full circle. Okay? The title of this presentation that you all signed up to come to on a Friday, 12 noon, you could be anywhere. Okay? Is making yourself indispensable as an intern. Okay? What we just talked about today are some things that you can do before, during, and even after to make yourself indispensable so that they can't live without you. They have to hire you. You have to be the person that they bring on full time. You have to want to work there. Or maybe you don't. Right? This is the kind of stuff I want you to be thinking about. Can they live without you? Okay? Can you live without them? Okay? Because some of your internships, you're going to walk out and say, you know what? I'm not adding value to the equation called life. I'm not finding meaning. I don't think this is actually adding to the bigger pie. And I don't really want to do this. Okay? A couple of years ago, some of my classmates, that question was never posed. It was never about the bigger pie. Okay? It was always about the bigger wallet, perhaps. Okay? Right? Or the nicer wallet or the nicer purse. Okay? You guys are much more advanced. You're much smarter. Okay? You're much more forward thinking. So ask yourself these kinds of questions. Because they can still go on without you, and you don't have to be there. Okay? So that's the talk. we got about 15 minutes for questions.